Did the U.S. Air Force plan to build a Super A-10 Warthog? The Air Force A-10 replacement strategy could involve building a new plane, adjusting an existing aircraft, or merely upgrading the A-10 itself. The A-10 was designed around the General Electric GAU A-8 Avenger 30mm cannon and its seven barrels, which are able to dish out devastating punishment to armor. Over the years, the Warthog's 11 hardpoints have evolved from carrying dumb iron bombs and rockets to hauling the latest guided ordnance. The A-10 Warthog ground attack jet, already in the process of receiving new wings, is also set for a series of improvements including new weapons, cockpit upgrades, and helmet-mounted controls. Just six years ago, the U.S. Air Force was on the verge of culling its entire fleet of A-10 Thunderbolt IIs, better known as Warthogs. In 2014, then U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark Welsh III said the Air Force had to retire the A-10 completely if it was to make substantial cuts to its budgets, and that it required freed-up funding and manpower to be channeled into the stand-up of the new F-35 units. Welsh claimed divesting the close air support stalwart would save $3.7 billion across the five-year future year defense program and another $500 million in cost avoidance for upgrades that wouldn't be necessary. The Air Force is beginning to work on how fast, lethal, durable, and capable a new A-10-like aircraft would need to be in order to provide U.S. military ground troops with effective close air support for decades to come. Senior service officials are now exploring draft requirement concepts and evaluating the kind of avionics, engineering, weapons, armor, and technical redundancy the aircraft would need, Air Force officials told Scout Warrior. Many of the core technical attributes and combat advantages of the A-10 will be preserved and expanded upon with the new effort, officials said. The performance of the A-10 Warthog in the ongoing bombing campaign against ISIS, coupled with the Air Force's subsequent decision to delay the aircraft's planned retirement, has led the service to begin the process of developing a new, longer-term A-10-type platform. Following an announcement earlier this year from Pentagon leaders that the A-10 will not begin retiring, but rather will serve until at least 2022, Air Force and DOD officials are now hoping to keep a close air support aircraft for many years beyond the previously projected timeframe. Given the emerging global threat environment, it would make sense that the Air Force would seek to preserve an aircraft such as the A-10. While the aircraft has been extremely successful attacking ISIS targets such as fuel convoys and other assets, the A-10 is also the kind of plane that can carry and deliver a wide-ranging arsenal of bombs to include larger laser-guided and precision weapons. This kind of firepower, coupled with its 30mm cannon, titanium armor plates, and built-in redundancy for close air support, makes the A-10 a valuable platform for potential larger-scale mechanized force-on-force type warfare as well. The A-10 has a unique and valuable niche role to perform in the widest possible range of combat scenarios to include counterinsurgency, supporting troops on the ground in close proximity, and bringing firepower, protection, and infantry supports to a large-scale war. Air Force officials have told Scout Warrior that the current approach involves a three-pronged effect. The Air Force may consider simply upgrading the existing fleet of A-10s in a substantial way in order to extend its service life, acquire an off-the-shelf existing aircraft, or develop a new close air support platform through a developmental effort. We are developing that draft requirements document. We are staffing it around the Air Force now, when it's ready, we will compare that to what we have available, compare it to keeping the A-10, compare it to what it would take to replace it with another airplane, and we will work through that process," Lt. Gen. James Holmes, Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategic Plans and Requirements, told reporters several months ago.
Holmes went on to explain that the service was, broadly speaking, exploring ways to achieve, preserve, and sustain air superiority in potential long-term, high-end combat engagements. He added that considerations about a close air support replacement aircraft figured prominently in the strategic calculus surrounding these issues. As a result, the Air Force will be looking for the optimal type of close air support platform by weighing various considerations, such as what the differences might be between existing aircraft and future developmental platforms. Cost and affordability will also be a very large part of the equation when it comes to making determinations about an A-10 replacement, Holmes explained. The question is exactly where is the sweet spot as we talked about between what's available now and what the optimum CAS replacement would be. We are working along that continuum to see exactly what the requirement is that we can afford and the numbers that we need to be able to do the mission, Holmes added. Several industry platforms such as Raytheon's TX plane and the A-29 Embraer EMB Super Tucano aircraft are among options being looked at as things which could potentially be configured for a close air support plane. Having the requisite funds to support this would be of great value to the Air Force. Former Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark Welsh told lawmakers that, despite the prior plan, the service did not want to retire the A-10. Prior plans to retire the fleet of A-10s were purely budget-driven, senior Air Force leaders have consistently said. I don't want to retire it, Welsh told a congressional committee in early March. Air Force leaders had previously said that the emerging multi-role F-35 would be able to pick up the close air support mission with its sensor technology, 25mm gun, and maneuverability. There is little question about whether the F-35 could succeed with these kind of missions. At the same time, there's also consensus that the A-10 provides an extremely unique set of battlefield attributes which need to be preserved for decades. <laughs>